Saturday is to begin podcast. Uh, best way is just, you know, follow you and introduce yourself and introduce the podcast itself. So, and uh, I think it's going to be easier for us because we already know what we want to say. So, yeah, we we'll just yeah, introduce yeah. ourselves using the topic itself. So, welcome to Adetola's podcast. Gig. And we'll be discussing a very, very important session because this is the best time for you to monetize, you know, ideas and your, your passion. Yeah, yeah. So, basically, and everyone is gifted one way or the other now because now it's digital skills. You really don't need to be able to run like we in boats to be able to monetize your, your skills. Right. So you could actually be in your room and you're making money. You're cashing out. But that's like the struggle. Everybody needs, everybody wants that skill. Everybody feels, every other person has that same skill. So how am I supposed to monetize or stand out mm. in the crowd? Mm. So I think that is, and it's like an eye opener for just, you know, the two of us and everyone listening as well mm. to be able to know what it takes. Everybody goes through that struggle. No matter how mid you are, you are still going through that struggle true, because true. whatever amount you've made out of your passion, you still want to make more because you keep improving. True. What, okay. you, what you have done yesterday, you're better now and it, you deserve more. True. Honey, yeah. Okay, so I think I need to start by formally welcoming you guys to our podcast. Yeah, yeah, welcome. Like it's it's been a long week coming. So in, <laughs> it's like you, it's like you. it's like the trips that we did out of WhatsApp group, <laughs> right? Yeah, because it actually started on on IG around April when I decided to start podcasting, and I came on IG and I asked you guys, um, "What should we call this podcast?" And you guys were like, "Our podcast." This <laughs> one, that one. Yeah, and then to to warm up into this. Um, moment, I decided to do like a 30 days challenge where for each day I made a video, right? But finally, I feel like, yeah, we are here uncensored, not filtered, and it's just me and my friends discussing and talking about things we think we know at this from our little experience. So today I have the one and only Dotsman Bricks. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll allow him to do his, in, uh, his own introduction by himself. So, all right, thank you for having me on this and thank you for joining us and listening and paying attention and probably subscribing to the podcast and also other social media platforms. So my name is Dotson and also known as Dotman Bricks on social media as D-O-T-T-M-A-N-N B-R-I-C-K-S. Don't ask me how I got that name. I was going to say, well, <laughs> what's up with the double, 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 double T, double M? Right, so they are dot man, definitely. Mm. Every dot is like a dot man. Okay, oh. And to make it stand out, I added, I added the double T and the double N. And That's nice. The bricks, yeah, I studied civil engineering ah. as first degree, and that was like bricklayer. Gig, gig. So the person that gave me the nickname said, ah, hey, we need dot some bricklayer now. And it became <laughs> dot man bricks. So mm. a, lot of says, a lot of people say it's touche, or well, I feel it came out of the royal states you can ever imagine mm. so mm. I, i'm a creative in terms of uh visual arts uh digital media and and all sort of creativity you can think of and in terms of marketing and branding as well and these are like my my Your my strengths basically yeah. Yeah. and it's also nice hanging out with Aditola today and, and you also do music yeah, yeah i do music yeah i do music so i love playing the guitar i love making music and hopefully you get to listen to some of my songs coming out pretty soon. Hopefully, they come out. They come yeah, out of no, the that, WhatsApp that group as well. Nice. So yeah. I, I think when your song drops, I'm going to bring you back on the podcast. Yeah, and we're going to talk about it. Yeah, official listening. Yes, so yes, so yes, so. All right, guys. So um, today we'll be talking about one topic that is very, very important, especially to creators and creatives, which is monetizing your passion. Yeah, I know you are very passionate about what you do as content creators, as creatives generally. But the question is always, how do I get money from this thing I'm passionate about? So that's when I will, talk, will be talking about how to make money from your passion, basically monetizing your passion. So um, that's personally for you, how did you start out as a creative and what was it like for you to discover yourself and how did you start basically? Uh, so for me, it's identifying the things I love to do, like things that even when I'm at my lowest state, I'll still find myself doing them, mm. and which is making artworks and making music. Mm. So these are the things that come, they just come easily for me. Mm. And the thing is, it's irrespective for the fact that they come easily. It's not just about the talent, it's about putting in hard work into it to make you True. stand out. True. Talent will be there, but hard work will make you better and make you stand out. Mm. And hard work gives you like value for, that's where you put value on whatever passion you have, you be it are. a soft skill, or, or add skill. <laughs> <laughs> See, hard labor, hard labor, yeah. let me pay you. <laughs> so I'm actually going to ask you, your first 
<laughs> your first at work. Sorry, guys, about that. You know, we are still warming up to the podcast. Next time, I remember to keep my phone on silent <laughs> because we are in the studio. And I think maybe going forward as well, I'll figure out a way to go on IG Live, maybe, and also do like a video be nice. version, yeah, of the podcast so you guys can join us in the studio. Keep in mind, our studio is somewhere in the corner of our room, and yeah, uh, we well, have now, a very beautiful view. I know, right? <laughs> I wish you could share. <laughs> So, uh, I'm actually going to ask, um, I was going to say something before the call came through. Yeah, we're talking about yes, how I was I able to... Exactly. Yeah, yes. we're talking about hard work and yes. stuff. So, I'm going to ask you that, that you can remember, how much did you sell your first, let me see, your first skill, the first time you sold your skill? Amazing. How much was it worth? And how did you go about getting your first client to believe in you enough to pay you yeah. for what you're doing? Yeah, funny thing, that was in 2016. 2016, 2017 ish. I, you know, I was doing normal sketches and stuff, and somebody reached out to me from the US, and you know, first thing person told me, oh, he likes my pieces and he would like to make an artwork with me and stuff, and I was like, you know, at that moment you are blown off, like somebody really believes they can pay for my piece. Yeah. And the next thing, I was, you know, you were skeptical about thinking what what price you're going to call is could be too expensive or hmm. something then i said okay i'm going to charge you 50,000 naira for a live painting when i mean live painting that is the same height as the person you want to be wow wow <laughs> if i'll do that now probably i'll be charging you roughly 10,000 pounds and i'll pull for it I did for 50,000 naira, which is wow. less than so 50 which, pounds. Which is literally, yeah, maybe like 49 pounds. <laughs> Do you get? And I was blown off. I had to tell my parents that, oh, somebody's coming, calling me from the US. And they were like, are you sure it's not a scam? This was US related, that stuff. Then the person even believed in me that he sent the money before I delivered the artwork. Wow, wow. Then I went all out, said I was going to put in my best skill. If you go to <laughs> my Instagram, you'd see, see the post. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> it was a post of Kemi Adetiba, so it was probably somebody related to her oh, that okay. requested for the artwork for her and I was able to deliver it to her. Hmm. And mind you, my delivery fee was also in the 50000 Wow. Wow. <laughs> and that was from Ibadan to Lagos. So, that was like the first cash I made and I bought a lot of art materials, bought pencils, bought really graded pencils and I was really happy about it. And So, so pretty much was you reinvesting the money back into the craft. So that's it. So mm. I didn't really push for, and at the same time, I wasn't really pushing for the money at first mm. because it was like, mm. I should change myself. Yeah, yeah. But sure. I wanted somebody to believe in it. Mm. And it's like a reference for me. So it's like a testimony yeah, or a testimony I, I basically. Do I do this and yeah. it is not just me doing it for my relatives or my family. Yeah. Doing it for someone who does not know me. Mm. And ever since I got a few referrals from him, mm. and nice. that became my storyline. And that's how I, I discovered mean, myself. To be, to be fair for me, yeah. I, before I went, I mean, jumped into filmmaking and photography and stuff, yeah. I started as graphics designer, right? Amazing. And <laughs> for real. And the first thing I sold, I, my skill now, like the first time I sold my skill was me making business cards for someone. So he, he saw a couple of designs I made and was ready to make a business card. And then I charged him 1,000 naira. <laughs> now, my plan was design the graphics, cut the card into cardboard, like go print cardboard into business card and yeah. then cut it into smaller sizes. Yeah. And at the end of the day, because of it was printing, it was cardboard, I think I made maybe less than 50 copies or thereabouts. And then I took it to him, happy, yeah, I killed it. And the guy was like, wait, this everything, like just 50 <laughs> copies. And I was like, yo, like you paid 1,000 1, naira. naira. And the guy was like, if you had gone to a printing press, they would probably give him a pack of 100 for that one key. Yeah. And I was like, ah, oh no. <laughs> so I think for me, it was from that beginning part, I already realized that there's going to, there's always going to be a cheap market somewhere. Definitely. But you need to understand you, your brand, and the quality and the value you put into your production. Definitely. Because for most of these printing press, they probably mass produce, so they don't care about profit on that small business yeah, card. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a turnover thing, exactly. function of numbers. Exactly. But for me, that was the only thing I was creating <laughs> at that point in time. So after that, I started doing more free jobs because I was like, this money thing is not for me. <laughs> but yeah, eventually I was able to find my way around it and yeah, we are still doing it. Exactly. So and like you said, if it's your passion, the mm. money will not yes, be what, true, what drives true, you. True, you keep true. doing it irrespective of the money. True. But the thing is, there's a way you build emotions around what you want to sell. Mm. So people are not really buying, even though you're putting in every other every other thing into your your deliveries. Mm. But the thing is, once there's quality, there is passion. True. You put emotions around the brand. So true. people really see you, mm. trust you, mm. 
mm. to deliver the good quality or, or that, that whatever you, you do. Yes. And once you're able to do that, people are ready to pay. So people are not paying for what you're doing. Mm. People are paying for you mm. because they because trust you more you. Yes. and the emotions you've built around. So you. I'm going to ask you a question on that point. Yeah. So now, because most creatives, like we said, for a start, will not be making as much as they expect no, from you the won't. business, especially no, you because won't. it's coming from a place of passion. Only if you are DJ Kupi. Gigi. So you might probably <laughs> you might probably be making you might be making the money before you even before you sell you out. Start, yeah. so. <laughs> so I'm going to ask, what what would you say about how creatives will not go hungry, especially starting out as young creatives? Uh right. So there are a lot of platforms here, and one major thing we'll talk about now is probably diversifying uh revenue streams. Mm. So, mm. a lot of people think uh, oh, my money successful business from... exactly yeah, successful yeah, yeah. business is that very one you stick to. Mm. So, I I, I I stumbled on a, a like a, 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 an Instagram uh, podcast okay. and somebody talked about how there was a class of fifteen students divided into or thirty students divided into fifteen. That's two groups. Okay. And the first group was to do a, a clay pot. Okay. That was beautiful and perfect. And second group was to make 15 clay pots. Hmm. And that was it. The first set of, uh, of group tried to make the most beautiful clay pot and they thought it was the beautiful clay pot. But the other set made 15 clay pots and they kept making mistakes in the first hmm. one. Hmm. They bettered themselves at the second one, bettered themselves at the third one. And when they came out with the final the, the piece, final one would be it was way amazing. Because, yeah, be so perfect. that is the way you also diversify your skills and your passion as well. Hmm. We are gifted in different ways, True. in a lot of True. ways. So it's for you to now identify different. And for instance, that there are supply chains in our, our, our skill. Take, for example, a photographer. Okay. There's someone who probably identifies, who talks about the beauty of a camera, who talks about this is what a camera can do. True. There's somebody who talks about, oh, these are the settings we can yes. do. There are some people that talk about, oh, so you look at the supply chain within that space you think you find yourself mm. and find how you fit into everything. You might mm. not fit perfectly into everything, but find a way. Well, you, find where you fit in and you stay fit, there. Exactly. Mm. Okay. So that when you do that, you're diversifying even your own passion itself. So it's True. not boring. True. Because it's not going to be monotonous like, oh, this is just what I'm doing. So you are doing this is, this different is one things. of one. And also look for different streams where mm -hmm. you can make money mm -hmm. so it could be even true collaborations can make money true so true. it could be your friends are doing this it, you could even be striking for your friends i found fashion designers that strike for their friends mm -hmm. and all they know is that i have the connections i'll get the customers this is my deal and you're making your money I whatever this, commission yeah. i get i move it into my own craft yeah, yeah, and i'm yeah. doing what i'm doing but a lot of times we really because you get help by helping others, mm. like the videos mm. line, mm. we rise by lifting <laughs> others. So I think another thing you can do as a young creator trying to make money, especially in this content cre uh, creation space, is for you to do other things, right? Don't just depend on, I'm doing content, I'm shooting, I'm editing, all of those things. Yeah. It's fine for you to be a banker and a creator, Yeah. which means during the day, go to the bank, work your normal nine to five, and at night, Carry your tripod, start creating, do your TikTok dance, do anything you have to Are do. Are you talking mayor? <laughs> <laughs> Say mayor could the banker. Or as as yeah. is that the mayor of Lagos? Exactly. And maybe sometimes as well, you can also experiment um, working around the media space, if that makes sense. Yeah. So, you know, you are trying to be to become a cinematographer. You can get a job as an uh, IT or an intern yeah. in a film production company. So that way now, the, the company where you actually intend, they are paying you as intern, even though it's like little money, you're also getting to learn from the company, from industry experts. And when you now get back home, you can go experiment what you've learned at work and do better mm -hmm. for yourself. And in this, in, and in this in context as well, there are some times that money is not even in cash. True. Take, for True. example, working with your church. You can see the effort churches are putting into brands and content mm -hmm. creations now. I'm going online, especially you since those COVID. Things, do you get... When you when you learn from these people and you're able to use, you're able to leverage getting some of their equipment to so even better your own yes, thing. You yes, are able to yes. leverage the connection. True. Leverage different things. True. It's money because True. you would have probably paid for a seminar to to learn those True. things. And before you know it, one um, some of those senior men in the media can start taking you to second shoot for definitely. them on gigs. Definitely. True, true, true. Okay. So, so on, on that note, can we talk about branding, especially personal branding? Because yeah. I feel like, especially for young um people in business, we usually find issues charging people and branding ourselves. So I don't know, can you share more light on what it was for you to start out as a brand and how you went about it? Okay, so one thing that branding also, that, that, that works 
hand in hand with branding is the quality as true, well. True. So when you when you design the kind of quality you want to deliver to your people, it also talks about the kind of niche you have created. So if your quality is good enough, you already know that you are dealing with people that are probably detail oriented. True. So they want perfection in everything true. they do, and they will, people are ready to pay for they perfection. They will pay for it. That, that's the truth. When that people actually see the quality of they will pay for it. They will pay for it. They will pay for it. So and once you can start doing that, those are the kind of people that would be on your trend. They will be they will, those are the people that will be at your store. Mm. Trying to get the ones orders asking from you, you how much is do you get because they know the value they are getting and uh to be in line also in terms of branding always believe that the product you're doing stands as is it, it represents you mm. so in my own case for every artwork I make I always believe this is me being hung mm. on the wall of somebody mm. so it's so your, if it's your it's, advert do you get so if it's terrible it means oh your daughter is terrible. Mm. if it's good enough you'd be like this is Oyedotu and it's mm. good enough so mm. that is how I deliver all those things and when people see those work just like that's my brand so when they see it, they know this is Oyedotu so, so that means you believe your products are reflections of you definitely mm. definitely because if it's terrible the next thing they say is the artist is terrible not the mm. artwork mm. if it is good the artist is good and mm. it's from the artwork that's so when you nice. build that and kind of things you also do alongside your art. So when people do artworks, you see artists, sometimes when they step out, you can easily tell these are artists. This is from this person, yeah. So when you see a creative person, especially in this age and time, you can easily tell this is a creative person. With their joggers and t-shirts. Do you get, you already know. <laughs> so one thing I did for myself is, my own kind of branding was basically emotional. Mm. A lot of people mm. would eat me and they would never even know these are the kind of things I can do. Mm. You can never, you can't say from my look and say things an artist what it or he does music True. or it could True. probably be creative True. you probably think I'm a tech boy mm. and I'm not an enormous boy so <laughs> para no my body right, right. so the thing is I build emotional brands mm. and what I do is I give out the things I've learned to other people to also do so like little kids I train them out to make this kind of artworks That's and remembering nice. that number one I'm building a network the kind of Kids I teach will probably report me to their parents. True. The kind of environment I, I, I'm taking them, I would relate with people around that circle. True. And once True. I teach them, I get better hmm. because I keep learning new things. And don't forget that kids are so gifted. If they are so raw. Yeah. They are kind of gifts. Yes. But you are learning from them as well. True. But it, it could be a different thing in different sectors. True. But build emotional brands so that when people, when you talk about your business and you're able to say something you have done for people, they get to feel and people emotion. get attached. Yeah, they can relate yeah. with you on an emotional level, True. and when they want to patronize you, I bet you, they've they, you, they've, they've experienced you in a different way. Even the, your your craft have, might not be have been experienced like bought your craft, mm. but they've experienced you even before getting your craft, mm. and that experience will True. keep them coming. True. Some will even refer you without even buying without things you from knowing. You. Yes, yes. So, so um, finally, because apparently it's always um, almost twenty minutes of this oh. podcast session. I must say it's been fun talking to Dotsu and you guys staying with us up to this Thank point. Thank you for listening. Yeah, so I think the final point I would like to talk about is one thing that really helped me grow and stand out as a creator, especially in my early days, which is um, collaborating and networking. Important. Yes, so for me now, when I actually started out as a content creator and filmmaker, I did a lot of challenges online. Like when you see um, something, something filmmaker challenge and there right and i always try to come from a unique perspective of course the quality was always there and then the storytelling was always different and unique so definitely kind when of you see aditola's work you just exactly, know it's aditola you know, oh yeah this this guy <laughs> for real though yeah. so because that that year now there were so many challenges online and people always vote for you so people voting for you automatically is exposing you to their space like yeah. you know this guy is doing this thing and it got to a point where people will see some challenges online and start sharing with me like, oh, I know you win this type of challenge kind of right. thing. So it kind of helps me build connection between fellow creatives because we are all competing against each other and it's exposing me to their audience as well, if that makes sense. Because this other person is contesting the same challenge. So there are people is coming to see who are also competing the same challenge, so to say. Especially if your numbers are not like close, they know, oh, there's this Aditola guy who is having almost the same numbers as you. You need to beat this guy. Yeah. But automatically, I get to know about the guy as well. So it really helped me build my small community when I was starting out. And again, I think I won most of them. Like if I did like 10 competitions, I won like eight or there. Now, why would they call you content king? It don't for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> so that really helped me to start out. And it kind of helped me to bring, to build a small community and a network of fellow creatives and filmmakers and 
creators like myself. So what was it like for you to start out as an artist? What, was it collaborative or you just do your thing and you just put it out there? What was it like? Yeah, I'd have loved to say a lot about that, but you can't overemphasize the importance of collaborations and networking. So True. all I'll just say in any network, in any skills uh, or area you find yourself, I repeat it time without number, collaborate and network. Again, collaborate, collaborate and, net- and I cannot say if I, no matter how much I say a lot of things about it, it's it Some just summarizes ways, itself. Yeah. That's the answer. Collaborate, collaborate and, and network. network. All right, guys, thank you for watching and listening to our podcast. Thank you. We'll see you on the next one. And I'm not keep going to grinding. <laughs> I'm not going to end this with promises of I will do more of this or expect this day or that day. So when you see I'm nice, but I look forward out. to more. I you know, look forward to more. Definitely more of this. And let's get your engagement. So if you have other other things you think that are very important in monetizing or how you've monetized your own yes, skill, please. Yes, you can please. add in the comment section. Yes, please. So if you can share with us how you monetize your skill, especially the first time. Yeah. We really appreciate it. Yeah. All right, thank you guys. Do well to like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. Thank you.